Circadian rhythms are physical, mental, and behavioral changes that follow a 24-hour cycle. Circadian rhythms, also known as biological rhythms, can be found in most living things, such as animals, plants, fungi, and cyanobacteria. A circadian clock drives these rhythms. Circadian rhythms are endogenous, meaning they have an internal cause, but they are adjusted to the local environment by external cues called zikabers, which synchronize an organism's circadian rhythms to the Earth's 24-hour light-dark cycle and 12-month cycle. Common examples of zikabers are light, temperature, social interactions, eating and drinking actions, and exercise, the most important one being daylight. The earliest recorded account of a circadian process was in the 4th century BC, when Androsinines, a ship captain who served under Alexander the Great, described diurnal, which is day and night activity, leaf movements of a tamarind tree. The first recorded observation of an endogenous circadian rhythm was by a French scientist in 1729 that noted 24-hour patterns in the movement of leaves of a mimosa pudica plant. The movements continued even when the plants were kept in darkness. This was also the first experiment with circadian rhythms. Other observations with circadian rhythms include Patrick and Gilbert in 1896, when they observed that sleepiness increases and decreases within a period of approximately 24 hours. In 1918, J.S. Sismansky showed that animals are capable of making 24-hour activity patterns. To be called a circadian rhythm, it must meet four general criteria. First, the rhythms must repeat once a day. In order to keep track of the time of day, your rhythms must be at the same point at the same time each day, so they must repeat every 24 hours. Second, the rhythms still persist even without external cues, so they're endogenous. The rhythms occur in constant conditions with a period of 24 hours, so they go off your internal cues rather than your external cues. Third, the rhythms can be adjusted to match the local time. The process can be reset by a process called entrainment, which is when behavioral events sync with an environment change. Traveling across time zones shows the ability of the biological clock to adjust the local time before entrainment. Circadian rhythms are linked to the light-dark cycle, which is the cycle of a periodic pattern of light alternating with darkness. Animals, including humans, who are kept in darkness for extended periods, eventually function a free-running rhythm, which means their sleep is not adjusted to the 24-hour cycle in nature, and they aren't cued by any time, so they are forced to live by their internal circadian rhythms. Research has shown that some Arctic animals show circadian rhythms only in parts of the year that have daily sunrises and sunsets. Researchers have studied reindeers in many different regions and saw that some reindeer show circadian rhythms in autumn, winter, and spring, and not in summer. And some reindeer showed rhythms only in autumn and spring. So the researchers suspect Arctic animals don't show circadian rhythms in the constant light of summer and constant dark of winter. Plant circadian rhythms tell the plant what season it is and when to flower for the best chance of attracting pollinators. Behavior rhythms include leaf movement, growth, germination, and photosynthetic activity, just to name some. Circadian rhythms occur in a plant when it's trying to synchronize with the light cycle of its surrounding environment. Plants also use circadian rhythms to anticipate when an insect is going to feed on them so they can prepare to defend themselves. And now you're going to see a video on how plants use their circadian rhythms to defend themselves against insects. Because the Earth rotates, there is a 24-hour periodicity to the environmental conditions that we experience. As a consequence, most biological organisms have developed an internal timekeeper to allow them to keep track of 24 hours. And in that way, it allows the organisms to synchronize their behavior with this 24-hour periodicity and oftentimes even anticipate changes before they happen. And so we are interested in understanding how plants use this internal timekeeper, the circadian clock, to improve their defense against pests like insects. Plants appear to be very passive, so just looking at them they look like they're just sitting there not doing anything, but actually they're extremely responsive to their environment because they have this internal clock, the circadian clock, and they can use that information to anticipate when insects are going to attack them, when the insects will start feeding on them. And they have a hormone system that turns on responses in the plant, that the plant generates, accumulates a number of anti-herbivore metabolites, so they make chemicals that make the herbivores sick. So when these uh, levels of hormones, they go up, 
at this particular time of day, it's preparing the plant to activate all the defense genes that are regulated by jasminates to defend itself against these uh, insect herbivores that would like to feed on it during this time of day. This set of plants, the circadian clock has not been altered and the loopers have not eaten these plants. Where this set of plants, the circadian clock has been altered so that the defense is down and the looper caterpillars have demolished the plants. So you can see that the loopers are actually, at least that one that just jumped, is now feeding on the leaves because their defenses are down. Right? So the plant's circadian clock is down so these loopers feel free to eat without getting sick. Well, these plants have their circadian clock defenses up, so the loopers, if they ate these plants, would get sick. So they stay away from these plants. It's really brand new insight into something that we didn't know plants were doing. We knew the clock controls many different kinds of genes and many different kinds of metabolites, but to understand that the, the two major hormones involved in defense that are significantly regulated by the clock is brand new insight into the importance of the clock in plant defense. In mammals, the primary circadian clock is located in the suprachiasmatic nucleus, also known as the SCN. The destruction of the SCN results in complete absence of a regular sleep-wake rhythm. The SCN receives information about illumination through the eyes. The SCN then takes the information on lengths of the day and night from the retina, interprets it, and passes it on to the pineal gland. The pineal gland secretes the sleep hormone melatonin. Secretion of melatonin peaks at night and recedes during the day, and its presence provides information about day length. Melatonin feeds back on SCN rhythmicity to create circadian patterns of activity. Now you're going to see a video further describing how the SCN works. So what I'd like to do in the second half of this lecture is to really tell you about what we know about the control of rhythms in mammals. And in humans, uh, we synchronize to light, and that light is received by our eyes and the retina. And this information travels down the optic nerve into the base of the brain in a region uh, called the hypothalamus, and within the hypothalamus sit two very small wing-like structures shown here in yellow that are composed of a few thousand neurons. And we know now from animal experiments that I'm going to tell you about in a few minutes that these structures actually contain our biological clock, the suprachiasmatic nucleus, or the SCN as we call it acts as a biological clock system for us in our brain. Now, if we look inside the SCN, we find that it's really made up of a network of nerve cells, many thousands of them. And interestingly, these nerve cells fire uh, with a circadian rhythm, and I'm going to show you an example of that at the end of my lecture. Uh, this kind of experiment has led to the idea that the clocks in the suprachiasmatic nucleus are actually cellular clocks. And so it is within the individual cell that the clock mechanism really emerges fundamentally. Biological markers. The common phase markers for measuring the timing of a mammal circadian rhythms are melatonin secretion by the pineal gland, core body temperature, and plasma level of cortisol. The first marker is melatonin secretion by the pineal gland. Melatonin is absent from the system during the daytime and is present in dim light. At about 9 p.m., it can be measured in the blood or the saliva and can be measured in morning urine. The second marker is core body temperature. For temperature studies, subjects must stay awake but calm and reclined in near darkness while their rectal temperature is continuously taken. The average adult temperature reaches is minimal at about 5 a.m. The third marker is the timing of the maximum plasma cortisol level which is measuring the amount of cortisol in the blood. This method is found more reliable in determining the circadian phase in humans than the other markers because circadian rhythms change according to our heart rate and the production of red blood cells, and this marker measures those things. These independent circadian rhythms are found in many organs and cells in the body outside of the SCN. 
These independent clocks are called peripheral oscillators and are found in the esophagus, lungs, liver, pancreas, spleen, thymus, and the skin. These particular rhythms appear to have more free-running rhythms than follow a cycle. Light resets the biological clock. Depending on the timing, light can advance or delay circadian rhythms. Artificial light does affect circadian rhythms, but natural light levels are much more powerful in attracting the retina. It is thought that the direction of light may have an effect on circadian rhythms. Light coming from above has a greater effect than light entering our eyes from below. Daylight has a direct effect on our circadian rhythms, specifically on our performance and well-being. Research shows students who experience disruption in lighting schemes in the morning experience disruption in sleep patterns, and these patterns negatively impact student performance and alertness. A school in the UK named Monk Seton has seen improvements with less kids absent in their school, and exam results are much higher. The head teacher, Paul Kelly, decided to change the time of school from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. They did this due to the students' body clocks. It is proven that teens prefer to stay up late at night and sleep until lunchtime. This is due to the secretion of the sleep hormone melatonin. So they align the school day with their biological rhythms to stay away from teaching kids when they are still half asleep. Disruption of circadian rhythms can have long-term effects on the body, such as cardiovascular disease. LED lighting suppresses melatonin five times more than other lights. The suppression of melatonin production, which is associated with the disruption of circadian rhythms, may increase the risk of developing cancer. Depression symptoms, which occur from long-term nighttime light exposure, can be undone by returning to a normal cycle. Obesity and diabetes are associated with lifestyle and genetic factors. A disruption of circadian rhythms or a misalignment of circadian timing with the environment, such as the light-dark cycle, plays a role in those disorders. Shift work and chronic jet lag have profound complications on circadian and metabolic events in our body. Some animals are forced to eat food during their rest period. This problem has shown increased body mass and altered expression of clock and metabolic genes. In humans, shift work favors irregular eating times, which is associated with altered insulin and higher body mass, concluding not only what we eat matters, but also when we eat. Disruptions of circadian rhythms usually have a negative effect. This is the effect pilots as well as many travelers face. Because airline pilots often travel through multiple time zones and regions of sunlight and darkness in one day, and spend many hours awake both day and night, are often unable to maintain sleep patterns of a natural circadian cycle. This situation leads to fatigue in pilots, and there are many studies to find methods to help this problem pilots have. Jet lag is when a traveler suffers from disrupted circadian rhythms. Your body clock doesn't adjust automatically with the different time zones. For example, if you travel from LA to New York and it's 7 a.m. in New York and 4 a.m. in LA, you will feel tired and drowsy because your body clock is set. It takes a couple days for your body clock to adjust. In conclusion, circadian rhythms are a part of our daily lives. They cure levels of alertness, our need for sleep, and our time for waking. As of yet, research shows that light, hormone, exercise, age, and many other factors are important in determining circadian rhythms. Furthermore, we must keep a regular and healthy sleep schedule so we can allow these two components, which are a sleep and wake process and circadian rhythms, to help us perform our best.